Hello friends, we are still not employed by a Fang company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do word search lead code problem. And if we see the number of companies where I want to work at who have already asked this question, there are companies like Amazon, Twitter, Microsoft, Uber, Bloomberg, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, Google, Apple, Samsung, Roblox, Goldman Sachs, ByteDance, and eBay. So these are really popular companies and this problem is really popular because it has very real life applications. We have all played games like crosswords and wordle on our phones and on the newspapers and different kinds of stuff. So that is where this problem is associated with and we are going to see that how to solve this one. So that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is a lead code medium problem and basically we are given an M cross and grade of characters called board and we are also given a string called word. Now we need to see that if this word can be created based on whatever the number of characters we are given on this board and if it uh, does we need to return true else we need to return false. Also we are given a note that the word can be constructed from letters sequentially adjacent cells where adjacent cells are either horizontally or vertically neighboring. And we are also told that same letter cell may not be used more than once in order to create that word. So let's try to understand this, this with an example. Over here we are given this big board and on this big board we are told that we need to find the word A, B, C, C, E, D. So if we see over here on these marked uh, values, so this starts with the word A. The neighboring word is B, the neighboring word is C. Again we are told that we can horizontally or vertically see the words so uh, if we go vertically downwards we see another c and then we find another e and at the end we find d which is also adjacent to e which is this letter and this is basically part of this given board so in this case we can return true now suppose if this word we, we if we were not able to construct this word we would not return true and we would return false so let's see that what would be the optimal approach to solve this problem well we have actually solved similar problems like this in the past using dfs and backtracking and this is what we are going to do for this problem as well let me quickly show you how okay so suppose this is the custom example we are given and we need to find the word spider to see that whether it exists on this given board or not and the idea is actually quite simple. What we are going to do is first of all, we are going to take the first uh, character inside this word, which is S and we are going to iterate over this matrix until we find this first character. The moment we find the first character from whatever the place is, then we will keep on trying to find the next uh, letter, uh, the next words inside this word uh, to see if it exists in the neighboring node or the neighboring cell of uh, the board inside this given matrix and if somehow we are able to reach to the end of this word we can we can return true if we don't reach the end of the word and we actually reach the end of the matrix we can return false so the idea is actually quite simple and uh, there are just few tweaks we will have to use in between so first we will start iterating over this uh, matrix trying to find this word number s now uh, this is not s this is not s over here we find the first value as s so because this is the first value as s now we will have to try to see that whether this p exists or not in the neighboring node of this s we can clearly see that p exists uh, so but before doing that what we are going to do is we are actually going to mark this node as visited so one way to do is is to use some visited hash set and store all the values but that is just causing strain on and to have an extra memory usage Rather than doing that, we are going to actually modify this input and we are going to mark it something like hash or something which is an invalid value and it can never be there. So which means at any point we encounter that this value is hash, we don't need to go back to that place. Now we will start iterating over the neighbors of this S. So neighbors of S can be these three, three places. If we try to look at these three places and we are looking for the alphabet P. So P is present over here which means that so far we have found S and P. Now we will update our value to I and we will try to look for I in this P's neighbor. Also we will go, we will mark this node P as like hash so we don't come back to this place again. Now this P has only two neighbors because this neighbor S has already been visited because its value is hash so uh, we can't do anything about it. Now we are looking for this letter I and we find the letter I over here which means again we will mark this as hash we will update the value of word we are looking for the word we are looking for now is D 
will try to find the neighbors of i uh, and in the neighbors of i okay we don't find anything over here this is not d and this has already been visited which is hash which means that there is no neighbor of i that contains this value d which means that now we are we are not, we haven't found the word so far and we still have matrix to go to that we haven't visited so far which means that now we will backtrack from this i to the position we were originally at which means that from this i we came from p from this to this p we k actually came from s and now we can say that okay even in this s it does not lead to uh, lead to us to find this word and then we will again process proceed with our search so again we will we are trying to find this letter s again and not the d because we did not find anything in the route which means that now okay this p is not s this i is not s this t is not s so we are good so far now at this position we find a, a letter s which means that okay this s has been found now in the neighbor of this particular cell we will have to find the the letter p and we are going to mark this s as hash as to as a way to identify that this has been visited now we are what are the neighbors of s these four are neighbors of s and the uh, one value we can find where the p exists is this one so again we will repeat the same process we will mark this as a hash we will try to find the word i i we will find over here so again we will mark this as a hash and we will try to find d in the neighbor of this i so we find d over here so again we will mark this as hash we will go update the word we are looking for now we will try to search for e inside this these uh, neighbors and uh, we can find it over here again mark this and then try to find this r so r we actually find in the neighbor of uh, this one and this is the correct r which means that now we are able to reach to the end of this word list and we can return true in this case saying that okay this actually exists inside this given board and uh, we will be good so this solution works perfectly fine let's see the time and space complexity with this one so for the time complexity actually the time complexity is a little bit tricky to find why because the time complexity is actually big o of n uh, which is the number of cells so for every single cell we will have to iterate at least once so n is given but then we will have to repeat the same process for three times to the length of l in the worst case scenario why three times to the length of l because notice that at any single position suppose we were at the po at this position number d and we need to see that okay whether the next value e exists or not so we need to check three places not this one because this of this already has the value hash which means we won't check this one but we in possible in theory we might have to check at all three places and imagine if all three of them had the value e we might have to it explore the paths on all three of them in order to find the next value r so that is why at every single position l we actually have three different options to see that whether this word exists or not and this l is actually length of the given word so that is why this is the time complexity in terms of space complexity uh, we actually need to store the value inside our space until the time we reach to this entire word so it would be big o of l uh, where l is the length of the word that is given and this time and space complexity works perfectly fine and uh, i hope this solution makes sense to you let me quickly show you that what would be the coding for this one So for this uh, word search problem, we will actually have to create a backtrack public method that will call itself and recursively we will try to achieve its answer. So there are some variables that we will need in both the in this boolean exist method and also in the new backtrack method that we are uh, trying to create. So let me define some variables uh, that are global and that we can use in both the methods and the variables we are going to create is to store the value of this board and we will also need the row and column size of this given board character array now we have these we will assign values to all these three variables from these given input endpoints once we have this we will have to iterate over this board uh, character array so we are going to 
assigned two for loops and for both the for loops we are going to have the i and j value uh, iterate up until the point of this rows and columns and inside this uh, for loop we will call our backtrack method now inside this uh, for loop we are going to call our backtrack method and we are going to have backtrack method return a boolean reply uh, either true or false and uh, inside the backtrack method we are actually going to uh, pass in the values of the current row position current column position word we are trying to find and the index value we are currently at so for the index value we would initially start with the position 0 and we would increment it every single time inside our backtrack method and if at any case this returns true we can simply return true in this case and somehow if we are able to complete this loop and get out of it without returning true which means word does not exist so we can return false once this is done now we will create our public boolean method called backtrack now first of all we will check that what is the condition where we will need to return true so if at any point we identify that the index value is actually greater than or equal to word length which means that we have already found that uh, the current word already exists inside our given character array so we can return true in this case so now we will try to find the terminating conditions and inside the terminating conditions first of all we will check that whether the row and column position are they going out of bounds or not if they are going out of bounds we can return false immediately if that is not the case we will try to see that the current value we are looking at inside our board if that bo that value is not in sync with whatever the index value of the word we are looking for if the that is not the case we can also return false immediately so if any of this, these conditions are true, we can return false immediately. None of these conditions are true, which means that the current index value actually matches the value of that row and column position inside the board. And now we will have to iterate over the neighbors of this current uh, row and column value inside the board. So in order to iterate over the values of the row and column, we are actually going to have two uh, arrays called row direction and column direction and that will help us navigate all the neighbors of any particular cell also before moving to the next element we are going to mark the current row and column position to have a value called hash so we avoid checking the same element twice okay once this is done uh, we will also have an, a boolean variable called uh, return and uh, initially we are going to initialize its value value to false because basically we are going to call the backtrack function uh, for all the four neighbors of the current cell so for that we will keep track of this rat uh, variable and we are going to run a loop to iterate over all the directions and we will add the values of these row direction and column direction to subsequent row and column positions inside this recursive call to our backtrack function we will also update the value of the index because we can determine that we have already find the word inside the previous index and that's why we are calling the next index where value to be searched inside the neighbors of any given row and column position and also at any point if we identify that the answer of this return function is actually or this return variable is actually true we can break out of that particular element immediately and we don't have to check all the other neighbors so we will put that condition as well once that is done uh, basically we are done with the checking part now the only thing we need to do is we will have to uh, update the value of the row and column position to whatever the value that was originally there and in the end we can simply return whatever the answer we got for this ret function this is pretty much it for both our backtrack method and also our main method and this should be able to solve our problem let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working let's try to submit this code and our solution works as expected and uh, I would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out the solution from there.